All right, so our camera now looks away from the player. It flies around the corner, looks at the robot. We've got cinematic mode in place. A lot of things are already going for us. Now we need to work on our next problem. Now when our camera pulls back, when it goes into its little movie, the next thing it looks at is this light. So the light is the next thing I'd like to animate. Now the effect for the light is twofold. There's the material for the actual static mesh itself, which is a material instance constant that we've applied to this mesh. And there's also a single light that we have to actually animate its value on. So we have two different things we have to tackle. The first thing I want to tackle is just going to be the material. Now if we take a look at this mesh, just double click it, let's expand static mesh actor, static mesh component, expand rendering. Currently, if we take a look at the materials property, we see that there is a material instance constant called fluorescent light underscore instance applied. And if we find this in the content browser, you can see it here. I can double click it. Its parent is MLT light SM fluorescent zero one. And it has a single vector parameter of light color, which has got it set to off right now. Now, what I want to do is animate this using matinee so that we can cause it to kind of flicker and then come to life. Now, this requires that we have some sort of an actor in our level that can kind of act as a go-between between between matinee and the material itself. Matinee can't talk to this material. Matinee only talks to actors that can get plugged into it. So we need an actor. So I'm going to open up the content browser, jump over to the actor classes browser, and if you take a look, you'll see the material instance actor, who is here just to help us talk to material instance constants. I'm going to right-click on the wall, choose Add Material Instance Actor here, and this thing is huge, so I'm going to pull it down a little bit so it's not quite so in our way. Let me take its draw scale. That first field, we'll set that to 0.5. Then click on the icon, which will make... Actually, you know what? Let's go even smaller. Let's try 0.3. 0.2. Okay, there we go. That's all I wanted. Something kind of small. Now, these can be placed anywhere in your level. But obviously, it makes a lot of sense to leave them near whatever object they're affecting. So I'll leave this guy right here. Now, we've got our actor, we just need to get it associated with matinee. So, I'm going to jump back into Kismet. Let's double click our matinee sequence, and then I'll close Kismet to get it out of the way. Underneath my action cam group, I'm going to right click and create a new empty group, which I will call light material. So there it is. If we jump back into Kismet for just a moment, we'll see that we now have a light material group which is connected to our material instance actor. Perfect. Okay, now if we select this group, we now need to add to it a property to control our material. And if we take a look, we see add new vector material param track. So we click there. Now this isn't enough. We've added our material instance. We've got it associated with Kismet. The problem is that we need our material instance actor to be associated with this particular material. So what I'm going to do is select my material instance actor, press F4 to open its properties, and you'll see the material instance actor category. Expand that, and it's just asking for a material instance. So let's open up the content browser, make sure we have our material instance selected, and we'll just click the Use Selection and Content Browser button. So now everything should be nice and linked up and ready for animation. So now all we need to do is animate. Let's jump down here to our vector param. Now if we take a look, there is a particular moment in time where we are looking at this light to watch it switch on. So if we jump over to our action cam by clicking the little camcorder button for the group, we see that that's between second one and two. So if I get Unreal Matinee kind of out of the way, as a matter of fact, let me demaximize the viewport and we'll just do it that way again. So for one full second, we're staring right at it. So what we really need to do here is animate our light to switch on and kind of flicker during this one second interval. So right here at one second, I'm going to make sure I have my vector material param selected and press enter. Now he's going to retain his original settings, which right now is zero, zero, zero. So 
Uh, the, basically, we've just animated him to stay black all the way up to this point. Now I'm going to slide the time slider forward to 1.15, or thereabouts. doesn't have to be precise, because it'll snap when we press Enter, but I got it anyway. So let's press Enter. Now, if I choose right-click, you'll notice you can't set the value here. We're going to have to set this value using the Curve Editor. So what I'm going to do is select our Vector Material Param. I'm going to click on the Display Curve in Curve Editor button. It's this little tiny black square here at the end of the track. Now, this shows our keyframes. So what I'm going to do is zoom in to our second keyframe, just using the mouse wheel, by the way. Now, if you take a look here inside of our actual uh, tab up here at the top that shows our curve, there are three little buttons. There's red, green, and blue, and that's allowing us to show each one of these channels individually. What I'm going to do is click on the green channel and the blue channel, and that will hide those away. Now, I can click on just the red channel's keyframe, right-click on it, and set its value. We're going to set red to 1.15 and press enter. And now we can fit that into the view by clicking fit view to all. And now we see that we're animating up in red. So let's go ahead and take care of the next one. Now I'm going to hide away the red channel and just show the blue channel. I'm sorry, the green channel, excuse me. We'll select this keyframe, right click and choose set value. This one we're going to set to 2.13. And again, we'll fit this into the view. And there we go. Now let's hide away green and just show blue. Select the second key, right click and set value. And we'll set this to 3.13. Okay, now if we show everybody, we can fit them all. Actually, let's just make sure that we, there we go. So now you see all three of those curves going up like so. All right, so now, at this point, we should have some animation. So let's double check, see how everything's going, everything is connected properly. Now, if we take a look at our vector material param, the reason, now here's the thing, we actually have animation here, but we're not seeing a result yet, and that's because we have yet to specify our param name. Our vector material param can change any values we want it to, but until we actually say, what parameter, what name are we adjusting? Nothing's going to work. Now, if, if you might recall, actually, let me just show you so I don't have to worry about uh, anybody's memory. If we jump into the content browser, if we expand fluorescent light, you see that we have a parameter called light color. So if I close this, I can come in, select my vector material param, set our param name to light color, and as soon as I press enter, now check it out. We have animation. So our light is whoop, flicking on. Now that may look really slow as I drag, but we are really zoomed in on the timeline. So if I press play right now, in fact, what I can do is I can play the loop section, which is currently set to loop between seconds one and two. And you see, it just kind of flickers and comes right on. So we have two keyframes. Technically, we have animation. We start in an off position and we go back to the on position. Now what I'd like to do, instead of just having to recreate those same keys over and over, I just want to duplicate some keys. So let's grab our first keyframe here on the light, and we'll go to Edit, Duplicate Selected Keys, hold down Control, and I want you to drag this over here to value 1.2. So here we are at zero, we flick on, and then back off again. Now we're gonna grab our on. We're gonna duplicate that. So edit, duplicate selected keys, and we're gonna drag this to 1.25. So you see we kind of slowly come on and then we flicker. Let's just kind of play back through, okay. We still got a little ways to go here, so let's grab one back. Now this is key two. You'll notice up here in the curve editor that it is, it's a, a trough, so to speak. So the light is back in its off position. Let's choose edit, duplicate selected keys, hold down control. 
and we're going to drag this up to about 1.35. So we get kind of a lull here. And we'll grab our next on key back and we'll duplicate that. And we'll slide this up to 1.40. And you can see what this is doing. We've got on, off, on, off. Just creating our nice little flickering wave pattern. Let's grab our off again. And we'll duplicate and drag this up to about 1.5. Grab one of the on keys and it, it really doesn't matter which one you grab. We'll duplicate that and we'll drag that up to 1.6. Grab off, duplicate, and we'll drag up to 1.65. Grab our next on, edit, duplicate, and we'll drag up to 1.7. Now let's just play back through this. So I'm just going to click the loop section button and we just get a little bit of a flicker and then the light stays on. So now let's hit stop twice to go all the way to the beginning and I'm going to put this viewport in game mode and let's just play through once. The light flickers on and everything is good. So now we can stop we can get out of matinee, and we're set to go. So we have now animated the light switch for, or animated the material for our light switch, for the actual light tube. That is going to wrap up this lesson. Be sure to save your work, and then we'll continue from here.